Psalms 119. Talk just a little bit about that, and then, then we'll begin here tonight. Psalms 119. Let's just pause for a moment of prayer and then we'll begin. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. I, I need you no less now than I did last night or any other time, Lord. I, I long for your touch every time I preach and I hope that'll be true tonight in the service. I know I'm nothing without you and I know that I'll not say anything that will be lasting unless the Holy Spirit of God takes that and places it into our hearts. Lord, give us years to hear with tonight. And Lord, I pray you'd make it easy for me to preach. May it be easy, Lord, to listen. I ask, like always, you give me love, faith, and wisdom. And most of all, I pray you'd fill me with thy Holy Spirit. I yield to Him as best I know. Lord, if there's something in my heart or life that hindered me from preaching, please move that. And I'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last night, we began looking here at Psalms 100. And 19, and I want to just review that just a little bit with you and just lay just a little bit of groundwork for you who may not have been here last night and just say a few things about that. And I won't be long. I'll, I'll be right out of the way here. And Psalms 119, of course, you know this is the longest chapter in the Bible. Since we've said that, just right back of that, 117 is the shortest chapter in the Bible. That's the verse you read when you want to say, I've read a chapter every day. <laughs> when you're kind of tired, that's a chapter that Baptists really love. <laughs> 117 some, but 119 chapters is the longest chapter in, in the Bible. And in that chapter, uh, it is built around uh, the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, you notice as we go through that, every eight verses, there is a, uh, a different letter. You got a letter, eight verses, a letter, eight verses, a letter, and so forth. I think that's important. I think all the Bible was given to us like that. I know that they divided these chapters up and so forth. I'm not saying that that was like uh, back when they wrote the Bible, it was like that in the, in the original writings, and nobody's ever saw those, so we can't talk much about that. But I know chapters, but I do think that's important because chapter eight, uh, that means a time that of uh, grace for us, that chapter 8, that eight, that word 8 there, it means a new beginning. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, is a new beginning. That word 8 means a new beginning. And uh, uh, when we think about that, uh, you can think a lot about 8. You know, that's the reason why we worship on Sunday. We worship not on uh, the seventh day, which is the Jewish Sabbath, but we work, worship on the first day, which is the first day of the week. And that is the new beginning. That eighth is the first day. And I hope you understand that. If you don't, I've I got to go on. So I'm not going to get hung up on that tonight, all right? But anyway, that eighth, that eighth is very important. I told you last, uh, last night that this is the eighth section. When you come to verse 57 down through 64, that's the eighth section. So it's a section of new beginning. And we're going to, I'm going to talk to you tonight about that, a new beginning. As you read the uh, 119 Psalm, it'll be easy for you to see that this is talking about a man's life. And this is a young man. He's young. And he's seeking the Lord. He's trying to find the Lord. And as he goes through life, he does find the Lord. And you'll find that as you go through that, as you travel through the 119th and 19 some. So with that all said, I'm going to start right here and then we'll begin. There's three words that we find in Psalms 119 verse 59. There's the word thought. I thought on my ways. And then there's the word turn. And I turn my feet. And then there's the word testimonies unto thy testimony. So we see thought, turn, and testimony. Like talk testimonies. Last night I talked about thought and what got this man to thinking and uh, we talked some about that and I can't go into that tonight so I'm just going to go on here and I want to look here now at the word turn and I'm going to talk to you tonight about turning a new beginning and turning how do we have a new start all of us at times need a new beginning that's why you're having revival this week. The reason we're having revival is because we need a new start. When I think about something new, it's not we get saved again, but 
we come to a place that that salvation becomes real to us again and we start that newness of life. So I, I believe tonight that would apply here in this passage. So a new beginning. And uh, as we talked about thinking last time, the right kind of thinking, are you with me? The right kind of thinking will lead to the right kind of action. If you think right, you act right. Right thinking is a positive thing. Uh, to have a new start, well, I, I just, uh, it just don't happen. If you want to have revival, it won't just happen. It'll require some effort and some thought on our side. Notice this word right here in verse 59. I thought on my ways and turn. You see, it's thinking and turning. It's not just thinking about it, it's thinking and turning. Isn't that good? And so it takes some effort on our part when we come to that. There's no doubt that these two words go together. And so this young man said, I thought on my ways. He thought on the pattern of life that he was going. He thought on the partners or the people of life that he was around. And that does affect you. And also he thought about in his life, this practice of life that he was doing. He thought on his ways. Now, uh, have you ever come into a room and it's dark and uh, you can't really see? Have you ever done that? Tonight, if we turned all the lights off in here, and I've been in rooms before, I've come into a dark place, and uh, somebody will turn on the light, and when they turn on that light, there's a whole new perspective. You get all that stuff you've never seen there before, and so we get that new thing there, that new perspective. And so this man thought on his past. Now look here, I, I, it's going to help you. I promise you, this will help you. This is good. This is good. I, 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 it's good for me. I just like to hear it again. Say amen right there. He said, I, I thought on my ways and turned. And watch this right here. He thought on his past and he looked around and without a change, whatever your past has been, your future is going to be the very same thing. Amen. Without a change takes place, whatever your past is right. determines your future. Right. Now, think about that. We know a little bit about tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I tell you, we do have a way of checking about yesterday. I can look back and see what I did yesterday. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know what's back there. I was telling somebody this morning, we were out uh, roaming around a little bit, and and Billy Kelly, you know, he was born down there in Oliver Springs. I reckon that's where he's from. And he lived right around there close to us when he was a young man. And he was in Knoxville one day and he was walking down the street. And this fortune teller came out and said to him and some other guy that was with him, she said, to, hey, she said, for $10, I'll tell you what you'll be doing this time tomorrow. Billy Kelly said, I got a better one than that. I've got $20 here, and if you'll tell me what I was doing this time yesterday, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, that, that's, that's something to think about, isn't it? I just thought, I thought you might enjoy that. But anyway, the pattern of yesterday does put us on the path of tomorrow. And without that change, that divine change coming to our life, there will be no change for tomorrow. And so we no doubt uh, will be the very same thing. I see people all the time, you do too, you pastors, See people like this all the time. Uh, after you've been around them a while, they don't change much. Right. I told those young girls at church, I preached this message at church, and I said, listen, all you young girls in here, if you're dating a boy and you don't like what he's doing, better dump him. Yeah. Because he ain't going to change much. Yeah. Amen. I mean, he, he ain't going to change much. In other way, too, it's, we, we're pretty well the same. I mean, we stay in that same line. When this man thought on his ways, this is what he did. When he thought on his ways, the Bible says he turned his feet. He thought on his ways and he did not like the way he was going. He didn't like the direction he was going. And you may be here tonight. Now if you're, with, if you're here, listen to me. This is going to help you. You may be here tonight and your past may trouble you. You may think about your past and your past may have had disappointments and heartaches and sin and you may have displeasure toward God in your past. And if you have a past that you don't like, you need to change. But you say, preacher, now you with me? You say, preacher, I know it. I know it. I know I need to change. I know that, but how 
can I change? Well, the Bible says, notice here, he, this man turned his feet. Now watch this. You can turn your head and you can roll your eyes without turning your body, but you can't turn your feet without changing directions. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it just can't be done. There's a guy in our church, he used to pastor up a road and he, he's got bad health and he, you may know him, his name's Roy Munns. He comes to our church and I preached this message. He's going home the other night and he called me. He said, Preacher, you preached something that I can't agree with. I said, well, what in the world was it? He said, you said that you can't turn your feet without turning your body. He's got, a, he's got an artificial leg. He said, I can turn my foot all the way around that. Don't turn my body. <laughs> oh. But anyway, think about that. Think about that. Yeah. This text now has moved all the way from the head right. to the foot. Yeah. He thought on his ways, but then he turned. And I'm going to tell you, that's what we got to do. Now watch here. Now with that in mind, with that in mind, I'm going to give you just a few things to think about here. Here's a truth that is easily to see. Change come to this man. This guy changed. He said, I thought on my ways and I turned. Something I want us to think about here now for just a minute. I'm going to change directions. Something I want us to think about here is this. We change, but our God never changes. That's one great thing about our God. The Bible says in Malachi 3, 6, For I am the Lord, I change, there, change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not condemned. I thank God are not consumed. Thank God He does not change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He will never change. You can come back next week, and next year, and 20 years from now, and our God never changes. Aren't you glad that we've got something to change too, and that's toward Him, but thank God, He don't have to change. He'll never change. That's great, isn't it? Amen. That's wonderful. Praise God. Now notice this. There's some things that's easy to see here. But here's something that's not always seen. Uh, it's not always seen. We talked about a while ago turning the light on. Uh, have you ever been in your house at night? And you uh, wake up in the night. And you get up. Maybe, maybe you're going to the bathroom or you're going to another room or something. And you know where everything is in your house. That's the way it is when I wake up at night. I, I know where everything's at. But sometimes, I'm not where I think I am. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever walked by something and just turned your toe off? Yeah. I mean, you know that thing was there, but somehow you're not where you thought you were. Yeah. When I was uh, a few years ago, about oh, 10 years ago, I, I, I ride horses. I'm kind of a person. I have too many interests. I just tell you, I do too much stuff. I like everything. And I was riding this old mule. It throwed me off, broke my leg all to pieces. I mean, it's just my leg, I'll never, it'll never be the same. I know you don't, can't tell it sometime, but if you were around me in the morning, you'd really notice that I can't hardly go, go for a while. But I was down to the church, and you come down the hall of our church, you come down the stairs, you come down this hall, this long hall, and it goes off into the fellowship hall, and it's about three steps. I was down there on crutches, and I had the lights off. And I thought I was coming down them steps on them crutches. And I thought I was at the last step. And the next thing I knew, I was out in the middle of that floor on my head. I done broke my foot, now I'm breaking my head. And so sometimes things are not obvious. Now watch this right here. Some things are made obvious to us, though. Even though they're not obvious to us right there, they're made obvious to us. You say, where are you going to with that? Well, just gather up here real close. And I'm gonna, it's going to help you right here, okay? It's going to help you. There's some things that we see real good in what's being done here. This man has changed. Are you with me? Are you with me? I don't want you to miss this now. There's some things that's really, we see that. I mean, it's just real plain. But you know, there's someone here that we don't see. It, it don't, it's not real obvious until we notice it. For we know that a person does not change alone. Are you with me? Listen, how do you change, preacher? 
There's some things that we can change ourselves. We can fix it ourselves. But there's some things you must have divine help if you change. We see God at work in this man's life. Notice here the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23, can the Ethiopian change his skin? Are the leper his spots? Then may you also do good which are accustomed to doing evil. A question is asked and that question is not even asked for an answer. That question, the answer to that question is found in the question the question is the point. The point illustrates the question. Here it is. Take a piece of land. Are you with me? Take a piece of land. and You, buy, you go out here and buy you a house or buy you a piece of land and just leave it alone. Just go away from it for about 20 years. And when you come back, you won't be able to tell it. It'll be growed up and the grass will be everywhere and trees that you didn't plan to be there. It'll be a mess. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? The point is this. Listen, God, there has to be somebody who changes our life. There's got to be somebody who gets within us and helps us be what we need to be. Isn't that great? A man left himself will do evil every time. And will not quit. Aren't you glad that God doesn't leave you to yourself? Aren't you glad that? Isn't that wonderful? Second Peter 2 verse 22 says, But it happened unto, the, happened unto thee according to this true proverb, The dog is turned to its own vomit, and the sow that was washed to the, uh, that was washed has returned to her walla in the mar. What's that mean, preacher? It means this. You know what? Now, I, I don't mean to be grossy out here, but I, I round dogs a lot. I got some dogs. Brother Thomas, he told me he didn't like dogs this evening and offended me, but I've got some dogs. But that happens. A dog will get sick and it'll throw up. But don't let this gross you out now. It'll turn around and the very thing that made it sick, it'll go back and eat it. You say, boy, that's bad. Well, I see people in church do that all the time. There's people in church, the very thing that's causing them problems, the very thing that's tearing their families up, the very thing that is messing their life up, they'll go right back and do it again. The very same thing. There's only one person that can break that pattern in our life. That pattern is not our skin. That pattern is our sin. And sin is all of our problems. You know what my problem is? Sin. Sin. I have a sin problem. And the only way I can overcome that sin problem is nothing that I can do, but it's what He can do. I've got to have some divine help. That's something right there that we miss sometimes. There's something here we see right off and there's something that we don't see too good. What's this? What's this right here now? Here's a true, here's truth that always is there. The Bible says this man turned his feet. And, uh, and, and what's this here? And he, this is something he had not done before. He turned his feet. And uh, this is something he didn't do on his own. The truth makes a difference in our life. Amen, down the road. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. Let me back up. Because I, I didn't give you that good. The truth. This always works. The truth. Are you with me? Yes. Is something that always makes a difference down the road. Yes. You still ain't got it. But you're fixing to get it. And watch this right here. It makes a difference down the road. Jeremiah 31, 18 says, watch this. Are you with me? Come here, come here. I, I'm, I'm just about through. Watch this right here. It says, turn thou me and I shall be turned. You say, preacher, what's that mean? It means if God turns you, you'll say turn. That's what it means. Do you get it? Down the road. Hey, down the road. If God does a work in your life, a divine work, 
It don't only work now. It works down the road. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, son, that's good stuff right there. Time out and shout. That'll help you. That'll help you. You know how a person get, how you can know a person saved? They keep on keeping on. That's what the Bible said about the early church. They continued. You know what happened? God did a divine change in their life. None of us will go against our nature apart from a divine change. You're not going to go against your nature apart from that divine change. Oh God. Do a divine change in us tonight. And I, I listen, I know I'm talking about salvation, but I'm always also talking about something else. Hey, listen, many times I fall down on my face and say, God, you've got to do something right here for me because I've got a problem that I just can't get past. That's right. Amen. Amen. Has anything like that ever happened to you like it's happened to this man? Well, I tell you, if it's not, you ought to, you ought to think about that tonight. When I was about 12 years old, I came to church. I made a profession of faith when I was 8 years old. I was baptized, joined the church, and the whole deal. When I was about 12 years old, 13, somewhere in that area, I came to church one Sunday morning. Brother Kester was my pastor. He, he pastored our home church at that time. We had a visitor preacher that morning. He didn't even preach on salvation. He, he, took the, he took the church to the creek and woodshed and everywhere else. I mean, he let them have it. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit that morning, I was sitting about where this guy right here is in that blue tie and black coat right there. I was sitting about right there. I was sitting on the inside. I remember that morning I strolled down the road I remember this. I don't know why I remember this, but I didn't even have no socks on. Why I didn't have no socks on, I, I don't know, but I remember that. I sat back there. That guy got to preaching. And the Holy Spirit of God came down there where I was. And he convicted me that morning. And I thought, if you would just hush to that preaching. I didn't say it to him, but I thought, if you would just hush... I'd go down there to that altar. We had an old mourner's bench that sat right here. I remember that morning they gave me an invitation. I got up. I came down to the front. I'm the only one that came. Nobody dealt with me. Not a soul. Everybody thought I was okay. I knelt right here in the end of that pew and I said, Lord, I want you to save me. I remember that. Now, I wish somebody had dealt with me that morning. It would have helped me down the road, but they didn't, and so that's neither here nor there. I don't know what I don't know where God saved me. I don't know where God saved me back there. When I got up, when I stepped out, when I walked forward, when I nailed I, I, I tell you the truth, I can't tell you. To pinpoint the spot, I don't know. I can't tell you. But I know I do know this. I've never been the same boy Amen. since that day. Amen. Now, I, I sin, and I do things that, that shames me. And I do things I wouldn't want you to know or see. I, I've thought I, I, I'd be embarrassed if you knew it. I'd run out of here tonight. I wouldn't even let you look at it. But Brother Marty, I've never been the same Amen. since that morning. I didn't get perfect, but God did a divine change. And that morning I thought on my ways and I turned <laughs> by faith just like Terry talked about and God did something for me. He did something for me that I could not do for myself. Amen. Praise God.
I don't know if that was the entirety of it, but I sure would like to hear it all. My, my, that's a blessing to me. Are you going to preach the other part tomorrow night?